Howdy everyone. How are you today? This is Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Inc. and host of the iTunes show, the Dr. Gwen Podcast Show. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some ideas for skyrocketing your business profits. Now I know there are a lot of people who are moving in the online business environment providing services and still there are even more who have for I'm drawing a blank <laughs> who have brick and mortar businesses that they have products that they are offering their clients and I think as I have communicated with different business owners in different platforms and different places I see a trend a common trend of being able to find the right client and I feel that the process of finding the right client requires a precursor it requires something that you first need to know as a business owner before you are going to even tap into finding the right client and just a quick story that I can share with myself when I started my business years ago I was very unclear about what I wanted to do there was an online component there was a coaching component and I had not clearly defined what I wanted to do where I wanted to be so I was playing a little bit over here and playing a little bit over here but not just that I wasn't clear about who I wanted to serve if you've been following my page you will have noticed that there were a number of iterations of what I did and who I served. I wanted to serve everyone because I felt like my services were great for everyone but as I listened to others and my mentors they would say you can't serve everyone you have to niche down and that was a very challenging thing for me to do because at some point I felt like I was giving up something that I wanted to serve people where it mattered most for them and if I were gonna serve them I needed to be able to deal with their life challenges and everything else now I had a business coaching certification and I had done business coaching quite successfully in years past but for some reason I was resisting going back there why was I resisting because I felt like well the business coaching that I did was pretty much coaching on the task and it didn't involve so much the mindset though it did to a degree but not to the degree that I felt was necessary for people to make those huge leaps so I resisted the business coaching for a while and I went back and forth back and forth and finally when I became really really clear that I wanted to serve business owners and started doing that and started enjoying the bliss of knowing that of course the business owners bring lives so they're gonna have their own life challenges that I will be able to work with them on it was at that point that things made a huge turn for me for my business and for my clients and I can tell you the clarity brought me to a place where now I needed to identify very clearly who I was going to serve so that story brings comes right back around to you in your business right now who are you wanting to serve but before you even get to that point you must be clear about what what do you want to bring to the to the people what is the product what is the service you've got to be clear on that because clarity my friends is key if you're not clear about what you want to serve or who you want to serve you're going to be rambling around for quite a while and not being able to attract anyone because you won't have the right messaging to find the people that have the needs that you have the products to serve so clarity is the first thing what are you offering then you have to know what is your unique selling proposition you see in business there are a lot of people like you 
there are people who are out there who have businesses, who are coaching clients, who are coaching business owners, who are providing accounting services, whatever it is that your business is providing. There are lots of people out there doing social media marketing, marketing, but what do you uniquely bring to the equation that you can point out to your client like, this is what I have to offer? What is that unique thing? You must know it. And once you have that unique selling proposition, you've got to now go and find your clients. Now I wanna share with you, not on my screen, but verbally, some places where you can begin to look to find the types of client that you want. But before you do that, you kind of have to know, have an idea of who are the people, their likes, their dislikes, what are their dreams, what are their passions, what do they want most in their lives, see? Because knowing this will help you to fine tune your message so that they can find you. Otherwise, in the whole sea of verbiage and all verbiage and the words and, and everything else that's out there that everyone else also has. So what is your unique selling proposition and what is your unique, unique message? You've got to know what are their lifestyles, you know? What, where do they hang out? You can't actually send a message to a baby boomer about lifestyle if you're offering a lifestyle product, for example. The messaging you put out to someone who's a baby boomer cannot be the exact same message to a millennial or a Generation Xer. It will not be attractive to them if you put a general message to call. So can you see the importance of niching down so you know exactly who you're serving and what are their needs and how your message is going to pinpoint their needs? It's really important. So today we're talking about ideas to help you skyrocket your business. That's what this recording is all about. And so I'm sending out general ideas and these are ideas that are foundational. If you don't get this right, there is no business that's going to be happening. I can tell you that from personal experience. So you've got to get this right, okay? So one place you can go to find out their lifestyles, what are they into, what are they buying is Facebook. Did you know that? There is a place called Facebook Audience Insights. And you can do a search for that. And you can go in there, put the location where you, where you live. If you have, you're targeting people in a certain area. If you're targeting people in the US, then you just need to leave it as the US. If you're targeting male or female, you can set that. You can set the age group. You can set the job descriptions. You can set all kinds of demographic things to find these people. And then Facebook pulls up a graph and gives you an idea of what are these people into? What are their lifestyles? What are they buying? Where do they shop? Where do they hang out online? See, all of that is important for you to know so you can find your audience. And that Facebook Audience Insights is a very, very great tool. You can look it up and, and search for it. I may have a video later that I will put on my blog to show you how to get there. I'm not gonna make a promise on that though. I think I do have a video somewhere though. I don't know how updated it is and whether or not the, the newest changes on Facebook platform will render my video time timeless or well probably not timeless but out of tune with whatever is currently happening on that platform. Now once you have your folks the fourth thing is because I've talked about three things before I've talked about you being very clear about what you need I've talked about you knowing what their likes and dislikes are, their lifestyles. Once you've got all of the demographic and psychographic information, the next thing is crafting your message. Boy, can I tell you that this is huge because no matter what, if you don't have your message crafted very clearly, you're not gonna find the people that you want online. 
even if you're sending messages out, let's say you're doing mail outs to people's houses, right? If they get those postcards or those letters and the right words are not in there and upfront to grab their attention, you just wasted your money. So it's very important to have the right messaging on whatever the marketing that you're sending out so that you can attract the right people. And getting a copywriter is a great investment because they seem to have that gift of being able to take what you have and putting it in a way so that it attracts the people that you want to attract. So you gotta craft the message and those messages have to speak to the desires, the dreams, the pain points, all of their psychographic, their lifestyle of the audience that you wanna have. You can't have that same message as I said for a baby boomer as you would for a millennial. Now, another idea, the fifth thing is get your business out there on Google business page, Google Places. Go on out there, put your business name, get that awareness of your business out there. You may not have a physical address. Google will allow you to leave that blank, but get yourself out there in Google Places. On Bing also, I believe now Bing and Yahoo are the same, but go on there, re register your business, register the phone number, and put a little blurb, if allowed or when allowed, about your business. And there's a, Bing is another place that you can go to. And as I said, Bing and Yahoo may be the same thing. And then there's Yext. Now Yext is one that I haven't quite checked into, but there is that piece and Yelp, Y-E-L-P. Yelp, now once you're out there, invite your customers to go out there and leave your reviews. You will be amazed how those reviews really, really help because everybody's Googling these days. And once they get on Google and they type in your business name, they're going to be able to see the reviews that come up about your business. Haven't you? I know I have made decisions about which businesses to go to based on the reviews on Google. Haven't you? Have you seen the validity or the value of going onto Google and being able to do a search and reading all the things that people have to say about doctor's offices or other products and services. Do you? I do my research really, really well. And sometimes I take it with a grain of salt because I also do know this, that there are haters out there. Oh, unfortunately, yes, there are haters. And there are going to be people who will go out there and say stuff about you that's not true. You know, I, I can't imagine why anyone would want to do that, but they're gonna say stuff about your products that never happened. I came across that experience the other day when I was looking for a water product, like producing alkaline water, and did a Google search and found a very dashing review. and there were two or three of those. And when I contacted the company, because the company had come highly recommended by a friend of mine whom I trusted and she knew the owner. And then talking with the owner, I got a deep sense of, I'm very intuitive, so I got a really deep sense of who this guy was. And when I wrote the company and I asked them about the review, and they said that those reviews came from a previous employee who was disgruntled and left the company. And apparently he got a buddy to also put a similar report. Now, when you know there are two or three reports about something, that's, you know, it tends to be believable. And so that was going on. And my heart really hurt about that. And even then, you know, you followed other people who are gurus in their areas and their field and they will tell you that people will go up on Amazon and leave a bad book review even though they've never read the book. I have seen that happen where I've gone to leave a good review and somebody said something about what the book was saying and it was never in the book. But someone who has not read the book wouldn't know that. You know, so unfortunately those things are discouraging and they are 
what I call low vibrational stuff, stuff that you don't want to engage in because it's not going to uplift you and cause you to be your most powerful, best fulfilled self. So all of that to say is get your business out there and ask your best customers to go and leave your reviews. Then there is Alignable. Alignable is a community-based platform for business owners. Go on there, register, put your information. LinkedIn is a wonderful one for business owners, especially if you're looking for business to business clients. And there are business to customer clients too because those clients who are actually in businesses are people who have needs and they've got needs that maybe your products could serve. You want to be very cautious about how you're doing it though because what you don't want is to be all over there wasting your time and not targeting who you need. There are different groups on LinkedIn that you can become a part of and share the value as you go on these platforms. There's Facebook, Facebook business pages, and Twitter, and Instagram. There are many others. Now, I will say you need to know where your audience is. Because if your audience is not on LinkedIn, then that would be a waste of time for you to go and spend your time there. And if your audience is not on Facebook, then also you may be wasting your time. Some of your audiences may be on Instagram. The younger folks tend to hang out there. It's a more visual platform. And so you need to know where your audience are, audience is and go there and provide value for your audience so that they can see and become aware of your business. A seventh idea of skyrocketing your business profit is forming business partnerships or teams. Now this is a great one. In going out to your networking meetings, you're meeting a lot of people. And no doubt there are some of these people who can be partners with you. They're not necessarily selling your product, but the partnership can work in two ways. The first way is that you can bundle a package together, whether it be an electronic email package where you're offering maybe a free coaching session and they're offering a free product session of whatever it is. Find businesses that serve your clients and partner with them. And together, you can creatively create packages that will benefit your businesses. The second way you can do this is by cross-promoting. So when you send out an information, you send out a little cross-promotional blurb about your partner, and when they send out information, they send out cross-promotional blurb about you. So those are two ideas that you can use to help you skyrocket your business profits. And the eighth one that I will talk about is getting your current clients on board. If you're doing a good job serving your clients, they will want to be a word of mouth piece for you. And as long as you're serving them and being in integrity with what you are promising to offer, you can ask them to promote, send an email and ask them to send an email to three to five of their friends and offer a discount of some service that you know they like or they want or they have or they need. Offer a discount to them if they send you three to five referring clients. And once they do that, deliver on your promise. So those are eight ideas and in review, I will say the first one is to be clear. You must be clear about your message and what your unique selling proposition is. The second one is you've got to know who your clients are, know their likes and their dislikes, their aches and dissatisfaction, all their dreams, their lifestyle and psychographic. How do they think? Where do they go? What are the things they're into? And I told you about Facebook Audience Insights, which will help you with that piece. The fourth thing is, now you know all this, craft your message to target exactly 
what you just researched, their lifestyle, how they think, what are their dreams and their visions and their passions and their pain points. So that's the fourth thing that you need to do. Number five, get your business noticed. Get your business out there on social platforms. Don't be shy about putting your face out there on LinkedIn. I know a lot of business owners tend to say, well, you know, I don't, I'm not comfortable putting my face out there. It does feel like an invasion to start because you've lived a very private life and you want to keep it that way. But in this day and age, everybody wants to know who they're doing business with. So put your face out there. It's okay. I mean, I finally come to grips with that because I had some angst about, oh, my picture, oh, my face, oh, my story, oh, my, all of that, you know, and it was just a momentary thing because I don't sit for long and entertain those thoughts, cross my mind, whoosh, out of there, I'm on it, doing what I need to do. The sixth thing is go on to the social platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Alignable, all of those places, go there and get your business noticed. Provide your expertise, provide inspiration or whatever it is. Seventh thing is form business partnerships with people who are serving the same businesses like you are. And then get together and formulate some ideas of what you're going to do. And the eighth and final thing is get your current lovable adorable customers on board and have them to be word of mouth marketing for you. Encourage them to put their testimonials in whatever email you're sending them to send to their friends and have them promote for you. So my friends, this I hope has been very beneficial to you and that now you've got eight ideas that you can go off and use to help you skyrocket your business profits. This is Dr. Gwen, inspiring lives to live purposefully and passionately and skyrocketing your business profits from the inside out. Bye.